Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. I know that it's been a while since my last video, but I've just been kind of busy. But today we are predicting the 2024 Euros. I've never done anything like this before in a video, so let's jump right into it. But before I actually jump into the prediction itself, I just kind of want to talk about some teams that I feel like have a great chance of actually winning or who I'm rooting for. Germany obviously being the hosts and being a squad full of really good players in really good form are a team that has a really, really good chance at, you know, potentially winning the entire thing. England, although the squad in general is pretty weird for some people, I don't mind it. And again, there's some really good players in there with incredible form like Foden and Palmer and, and players like that. So I think they will actually go far. You know, people really wanna see England, you know, fail all the time i don't really and then of course we have spain who i really sympathize with I, I really like the way they play i really love spain i uh i love the style of football that they play maybe they have the least chance um out of these three but i'm still rooting for them and then we have some underdogs um like my country hungary so obviously i would love to see my own country go as far as possible in this tournament uh, but we're gonna have to see and let's start with group a so we have Germany Scotland Hungary and Switzerland Let's start with Germany. Okay again as I said Really good forms for a lot of players. I'm talking Verts, even though they lost this uh, Europa League final Which is it was a kind of a weird match, but that deserves its own video Hummels didn't make it into the um, The squad which is kind of sad because I feel like he's still a really good player But we do have full crew We have Undav who are in great form and have good potential to score a lot of goals and then players like Musiala and Zane and Gundogan are already really Important parts of this team and I expect them to perform as well in this tournament. Oh, and also Havertz He's been on an uprise lately. So look out for him in terms of matches It's really interesting because lately they've been performing weird that they beat both France and the Netherlands, but somehow lost to Turkey and Austria as well. So that's certainly really interesting because it kind of seems like against these smaller sides, they kind of struggle. And uh, this brings me to my next team, which is going to be Hungary, which again is my own country. So obviously I'm, I'm rooting for them. I also remember that last time around, we were in the group of death with Portugal, France and Germany. But now in this group, I actually feel like we do have a chance of, of going through. Now players wise, obviously everyone is expecting a lot from Dominic Soboslai and uh, he's not been bad for Liverpool. I feel like a lot of people criticize him not too fairly he's definitely our best player but we must not underestimate the team spirit that this uh, that this squad has last couple games we actually won we did just lose to ireland which was kind of interesting but we beat montenegro we beat turkey who by the way did beat germany as well we've been good lately i have high hopes that you know just the feeling that you're in the euros uh, and you know with all the fans and everything it's gonna bring the best out of these guys and we are actually gonna go through from this group now Scotland um, are an interesting team as well they tied both with Georgia and Norway lost 4-0 to the Netherlands and also lost 1-0 to Northern Ireland so unfortunately I think I have them at the bottom of this group and then Switzerland who are always dark horses if you remember last euros they actually went really really far even beating france on penalties if i remember correctly and they do make it to most world cups pretty much every single one of them and they also do make it to the round of 16 most of the time if we look at some of the previous results that they had they drew 1-1 with kosovo uh, they lost to romania 1-0 and they also drew with denmark 0-0 and i wouldn't go as far as to say that their squad is stacked with star players but we do have in the defense uh, the likes of akanji for example or Cher. in the midfield we have zakaria we have jaka who just had a banger of a season but i still am hopeful and maybe this is going to be just super biased but I'm just going to say Germany first, Hungary second, Switzerland third, and then Scotland fourth in Group A. Moving on, we have... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Moving on, we have Group B with Spain, Croatia, Italy, and Albania. Another really interesting one. I'm just going to start with Albania because sadly, I think they are actually going to be bottom of this group. Previous games, not very good. They lost to Chile. They uh, lost to Sweden. Uh, they drew the... What? Oh, the Ferry Islands. Jesus, they do have some very decent players and maybe like, you know, the, the team spirit is going to be really strong. But I just don't see a way of them 
actually making out of this group. And then we have Croatia, who always do good in a World Cup, or lately they've been doing amazing at World Cups. Not so much at the Euros, though. They are in pretty good form, though, and their squad is pretty strong still. So you must not underestimate this Croatia side either. And then we have players like Vardiol in the defense, who has been performing incredibly at Man City. In the midfield, we still have the legend, Luka Modric, who's going to be there. But we have Kovacic, Brozovic, you know, Vlasic, Pasalic, so many players. Either way, this is a great team. We're just gonna have to see how they perform. For me, though, they are actually third in this group. Now, Italy. Again, extremely interesting because pretty much right after winning the Euros in 2021, they failed to qualify for the World Cup. But I still think they are going to go through from this group nonetheless. The squad is incredible. Bostoni had a banger of a season, for example, at Inter. And up front, we have a lot of variety. We have Skamaka, who was really good for Atalanta in the, in the Europa League. So I actually have them go through from this group. And you know what? This might just be biased again because I really like Spain. But I think they are going to top this group with Italy being second, uh, Croatia being third and Albania being fourth. But let's talk about Spain just a little bit. Played an incredible 3-3 with Brazil. Uh, that was a really good match. But what's really interesting here is the squad, the depth that this team has. I feel like they're so stacked. They are up there with, you know, Germany and England, I feel like. Lamine Yamal, first and foremost, okay? I am so excited about him. He is 16 years old. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm just about to turn 18. This kid is crazy. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him play. Group C might just be a little bit clearer. Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, and England. With all due respect, I can't say too much about Slovenia, for example. I know that lately they've been performing pretty good. They did beat Portugal, which is a pretty big achievement. They obviously do have Oblak in goal, who's who's an incredible goalkeeper. But other than that, I don't think their squad is that stacked with like informed players, per se. And so I actually think they are gonna finish bottom of this group. Then we have Denmark, who also pretty much always make it to the world cup but don't necessarily perform all that well in the world cup but i also do remember them making it very far last euros they didn't really have tough matchups but they did beat sweden as well up front is going to be interesting i wonder if they're going to give a chance to hoyland he's pretty hyped obviously playing for man united and let's talk about serbia a little bit because they have not been in very good form lately i feel like just solely based on their form lately I would actually put them at third. Up front, we do have Tadic, Kostic, Mitrovic, Jovic, Vlahovic. Really good players, honestly. It really is up to the coach what he's going to do with these players. I don't see this squad or this team making it through the group stages. So I actually have them at third, Denmark at second, and I have England at first. So let's talk about them. Uh, they lost to Brazil. That was also a really tough match. Also a really good match with Belgium, 2-2. That was a really nice one. But I don't really think that all of that matters, even though it's not bad. I don't even know who are gonna be in the starting 11, but in the midfield, dude, in the midfield. I don't, I have no idea who to even play. Rice, Bellingham, Foden, Gallagher, Palmer. I'm calling it right now. They are gonna be unbeaten in the group. Group D, Austria, Poland, France, and the Netherlands. Woo, tough one. Now we did see Austria beat some pretty strong teams and they also have an unbeaten record right now i you know what i can't see them perform bad in this tournament so much so that here is gonna be my first hot take i actually think that they're gonna be second in this group behind i'm just gonna tell you right now the netherlands because they also have a pretty good record they also are in pretty good form javi simmons as well he has been amazing at Leipzig. There's Frimpong, who's a really versatile player. He can play on the wing. He can play as like a, you know, a wing back. He can play as a, an actual right back. You have Malin. He also had a good season with Dortmund. So I really think that this is a very, very good squad. And yeah, I do have France as uh, third. If we just take a look at, uh, you know, the games that they've been playing lately. I mean, they, they beat Gibraltar 14-0, which was ridiculous, uh, a ridiculous match for sure. The really big advantage that this team has over a lot of them is, again, you know, the quality of the players that there are in this in this squad because it's kind of insane. And then up front, we have, you know, we do have Mbappe who just made the move to Real Madrid. It's insane to even think that that's actually real. He's always going to step up in these tournaments. I feel like he's going to be really good but I do still see them finishing third in this group. And unfortunately, we have our Polish friends 
as fourth. This is a really, really tough group for them. That's the only reason why I have to put them at fourth. And it's the form as well that they've been in lately. It's just not been the greatest. Now, Lewandowski, you know, there's no argument there that he is one of the best strikers of our generation. Is he going to step up in this tournament with the national team? I can't really see it happening, you know, unfortunately. So overall, I'm just going to have to say, unfortunately, they are not going to go through. They are actually going to finish last in this group. On to group E, Ukraine, Slovakia, Belgium, and Romania. Now, there's an obvious one here that everyone will say is going to go through, and this is Belgium. Their form has been decent. So form-wise, not bad, but uh, guess what? Official squad list not available yet. Isn't that interesting? So obviously we have, you know, the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, who is definitely going to be like a crucial player in this squad. Lukaku, who a lot of people blamed for performing really poorly in the World Cup. I still think he's a really good player and he's extremely underrated, especially his passes. Do you see that one against England? If you haven't, then go check it out. Ukraine, in spite of everything that's going on there, they are in pretty good form. Uh, they drew both Germany and Italy which is pretty impressive to say the least. So I will say behind Belgium, Ukraine are going to go through a second. On to Slovakia. So nothing too exciting about their form. Although it's not bad, they beat Bosnia and Iceland. I don't really think this team can go that far, unfortunately. And I kind of feel similarly with Romania. I don't really know too much about this team. Now, again, based on form lately, you know, they did beat Switzerland, which is, I guess it's, it's kind of a big deal. But still, I feel like Ukraine are going to perform really, really well. And I just see Belgium going through as well. So I think Romania are going to finish second and, uh, sorry, third. And um, Slovakia is going to finish fourth. And now on to the last group. Here we go. Here we have Portugal, Czechia, Georgia, and Turkey. Portugal. They, I think they always step it up when it comes to the Euros. So pretty good form beat Liechtenstein, beat Iceland, beat Sweden. Ruben Dias, really good player. Pepe, for some reason, is still there. Nuno Mendes is also there, and Cancelo, who has been pretty good for Barcelona, although he did really, really choke uh, the Champions League for us. And then when it comes to forwards, we still have Ronaldo there. He's definitely going to get some playing time, but we still have some other players that are really exciting. Felix, really good for Barcelona, in my opinion. Uh, Rafael Leao is just an incredible player, but Jota has been good for Liverpool as well, and there's Gonzalo Ramos as well. Next up, Czechia. They are in pretty good form. When it comes to their squad, there's always a couple of standout players, mostly in the attack. We have Flozak and Schick both playing for Leverkusen, I believe. But looking at their record, I don't think that they're gonna perform bad. And then we have Georgia barely qualifying, but I think this is their first time ever at the Euros. When it comes to form, they beat Cyprus through Scotland, lost to Spain, obviously. But we must not forget about what Kvaratskhelia is capable of, because he may not have had the greatest season at uh, Napoli this year. He is still an incredible player. And then Turkey, their form, lately is probably one of the worst uh, in the entire Euros. They beat Germany, uh, which is really interesting, but drew with Wales, lost to Hungary, lost 6-1 to Austria, and drew Italy as well. I'm not sure if they are going to be able to play as well as they could, theoretically. Chalhanoglu's there, you know, Cocktoo's there. Uh, we also have Arda Guller, who is apparently is a really, really good player. I don't, I've not really seen him play all that much. And you know what? Hot take number two here is going to be Portugal top in this group. Second place, Georgia. Third place, Czechia. And fourth place, Turkey. So now we move on to the knockout stages. But before we do that, actually, we have the third place ranking. And uh, here we have six teams and four of them make it through. So I think here I'm gonna have to go with France, Croatia, Switzerland, and Serbia. So now that I've chosen uh, the teams that finish at third place but still go through, now we have the knockout stages. And then first we have Spain against France. Uh, very, very tough. Honestly, I'm just gonna speak from my gut. The fact that I put France at third in their group is something that makes me wanna think rationally about this team. So just because I put them at third, I think that they're not gonna perform as good as they should. So I'm putting Spain here to go through. Next up, we have Germany against Serbia. I don't think this is gonna be a question. Germany, Portugal against Croatia. Portugal, I think have a better team. 
have been in really good form. And again, Croatia, the Euros are just not for Croatia. Austria against Ukraine. Wow, really interesting matchup. They've been really good. You know, both really good form, especially compared to like what they represent as footballing nations. Uh, but I have Austria here going through. Next up, we have Belgium against Switzerland. I think Belgium are actually going to perform really good in this tournament. So I just don't really see them losing to Switzerland, who are, in my opinion, going to finish third in our group. The Netherlands against Georgia. It's really nice that Georgia made it through, but I don't think they're going to beat the Netherlands in a knockout stage game. England against Romania. I feel like this is the most obvious one. Unfortunately, Romania doesn't really stand a chance. And then Hungary against Italy. I feel like this might just be where the story ends for us. I'm really trying to be unbiased here. And we did play some really good matches against Italy in the Nations League. But I just don't see us winning. So I'm just going to put Italy here. Okay, Spain against Germany. Dude, Spain are about to have the toughest matches of all teams. I just think that this actually might be where it ends for them. Because um, I remember the, at the World Cup, they actually uh, played against each other and they drew. And it was a really interesting matchup because, you know, they do like these two nations represent such different styles of playing football. And I think, you know, I, I will always prefer the Spanish way. But I think, you know, Germany being the host, maybe a little bit more experience. I think they're actually going to go through. So I'm just going to put Germany here. Portugal against Austria. It's really tough. But I, I, as much as I don't like the Portugal team and as much as Austria has been in a really good form and I even put them above France in the group stages i feel like this might just be where it ends for them but i'm actually gonna put them through you know what i'm just gonna put them through why not belgium against the netherlands wow that's so interesting as well oh my god that's such an interesting matchup oh my gosh dude i actually don't know i want to put belgium through i actually want to put belgium through and i will i will because i think belgium are just a better team currently in my opinion might be wrong about that you know netherlands also stuck with ta uh, with talent but i think when it comes to form Belgium has been better lately. And then England against Italy. So we're just going to be replaying the final pretty much once again. But here I actually have England going through. I actually have England going through to the final. But let's just see what we have here. So Germany against Austria. So, you know, we just saw Austria beat Germany. I just don't see that happening again. I just don't see that happening again. Not to discredit Austria as, at all. The fact that they made it this far as well in and of itself, I think is pretty impressive. But Germany, again, are the hosts. They have such a nice squad. I feel like I just don't see them not going through the final. So Germany and England in the final. There's no question here. England are just such a tough squad, just purely based on like the talent that they have. I just don't see Belgium, even though they went this far, you know, beating the Netherlands even. I don't see them actually beating England. So here we go. Um... England or Germany winning the entire thing. I'm going to have to say something here. Okay, I'm going to have to say something because at the end of the day, this is a prediction video, but it's so tough. It is actually so tough because a part of me actually wants England to win because, you know, they've been kind of clowned on for not winning anything, um, you know, with the national team. But Germany are the hosts and, and, and this, this is a really nice team that they have. But at the same time, England such a nice team that they have and, and they really we you know we've been seeing them choke the finals absolutely sell in the finals but i think that the the squad that they have now is very different to what they did last time rashford is not in there for example and i'm not uh, saying this you know to hate on rashford at all i'm just saying that you know it's very different and i feel like it's actually going to be a lot better this year or like this time uh, than last time and as much as you know i would actually you know be kind of happy if germany won as well because at the end of the day they're the hosts and they haven't won in a long time uh i i'm gonna go for england i'm gonna go for england this might be a hot take uh a lot of england fans who are gonna see this are just gonna be like okay well that's that's wonderful that you, you did that i i totally agree with you some salty england fans are just gonna be like nah we're just gonna you know not even go through the group stages I actually have England winning this. I have a lot of players there that I really like. And I just think that they have this thing in them that might just be 
what determines who wins this tournament. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to let me know by pressing the thumbs up button and also subscribing to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Also, feel free to use the comment section under this video because uh, that's the whole point of it. Make sure to let me know who you have as your winner and who you're rooting for, who you have uh, as a dark horse, for example. And yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace out, goodbye, and uh, yeah.